Here's a question I've been asked many times, and the answer is pretty simple. Um, you know all those fancy old lenses that aren't made anymore? Of course, Meyer Optic Gerlitz is making some of the, remaking some of the really awesome ones. Like I have a Trioplan, which is a three-element lens. Now that that lens is not very sharp, and it's got quite a bit of vignetting. It's a, a Cook triplet design, which is well, how many? Was it a hundred and twenty-year-old design? Three element lens. Everything's not about element count. Um, um, why would you remake a lens that old? It's not really that sharp. Pretty sure photography has something to do with art. Less is technical photography, like reproduction work, macro work, product photography, where a higher degree of resolution and uh, acuity of the image for large prints and banners is very important. Um, photography still remains an art form. Even expressing yourself in commercial photography and macro photography, art form is a paramount because everything is about lighting. I mean, you have high resolution, but you want to, you know, achieve some sort of look. You can make an awesome product look horrible with incorrect lighting. Anyway, point being is, and this is important, and nobody asks themselves this, and I don't think a lot of people even realize it. People think, well, everything advances, you know, like we improve cars. Now cars have airbags, and we have... Uh, design geometry for the pressing of sheet metals such that uh, impact does not allow for you to be killed well that's a really nice improvement it is the case however with optical design that unfortunately the button sniffers and the measure baiters have uh, created an issue in photography and the really awesome lenses are available only from a few sources either old lenses that aren't made anymore vis-a-vis -vis ebay or uh, small startup companies, um, like someone's making remaking the Biotar, the uh, the uh, 85 millimeter uh, f one uh, seven, isn't it? Right. I, I have two of those lenses, and I forgot the aperture. Anyway, that lens is being remade. Um, why is it the case that Nikon or Fujifilm and Canon are not making some of these? Uh, and I mean a true art lens. I'm not talking about Sigma, who calls some of their lenses art. I mean a true lens that uh, has characteristics which are magical, shall we say, highly desirable, and yet may not be the sharpest lens in the world. You know, they may have vignetting. They may have, like, a lot of chromatic aberration. Photography is still an art form. The reason why they don't make those lenses is because they folded to customer pressure. It is the case now that while we have uh, technically much more accurate lenses, they don't work as well. I've been asked this question many times. Why do some of these 80-year-old lenses look so much better in black and white than like the really, really expensive prime lens that I just bought for $2,000, just ultra sharp, blah, blah, blah. It's because it's been overcorrected. It's actually been designed to appease the button stiffers and the measure baiters who are sitting there with a slide rule trying to calculate every degree of perfection on a lens and it does not work that way what they've done and of course we, we all appreciate higher resolution we certainly appreciate a higher autofocus accuracy out of our cameras we appreciate these things just as anybody would appreciate airbags to save your life in a car you know shorter stopping distance faster acceleration in a car you know, the same thing is true in cars. She's like, why would you buy, like, a 60-year-old car that has no airbags, no seat belts? It's kind of a death trap. You know, you get in an accident with that car, you're going to die. Why would somebody with millions and millions of dollars buy some sort of old car with no airbags and no seat belts and uh, is a dangerous death trap? Why would you spend a fortune on an old? It's the same reason people that know what the hell's going on and are trying to express themselves through their camera and through the lens are buying the old, these old lenses because none of the manufacturers today are making that stuff. I'm not saying that we need to have like a completely awesome brand new camera and technically um, deficient lenses. I'm saying that people like Fujifilm and Nikon, now Nikon still makes a couple lenses like that and they're fading them out like you know the 105 F2 DC Nikkor. Um, I still make a few of the older AIS lenses but really, no, I mean, like, the really awesome, like, the 105mm f1.8 AIS Nikkor, they don't make that lens anymore. They should still make it because it's absolutely freaking incredible. 
Uh, that lens for black and white, micro contrast, incredible bokeh, incredible colors. I mean, that lens is just freaking unmatched. You can still get them all day long used for 500 bucks on eBay. They're not making them anymore because those lenses have issues that the measure baiters and the button sniffers have tried to weed out. And they've completely lost fact, sight of the fact that uh, this sort of uh, super uh, calculable perfection out of lenses is clinical. The word is sterile, clinical. They want everything to be like an operating room where everything has been sterilized in alcohol and shrink wrapped. Uh, you know, calculable, everything. So we have the least amount of vignetting, least amount of chromatic aberration, highest resolution possible, X number of lines per millimeter. Photography is supposed to, unless it's uh, technical photography, is supposed to have a, a soul. There's an interesting word, soul. The reason why these old lenses, some of them, there's like a, about a dozen or so, haven't been made for 40, 50. They're, they're, they're fetching a fortune. They're fetching a fortune. You think that people, uh, lens manufacturers, would say to themselves, you know, while we can make technical lenses and we have a wide variety, well, let's think about maybe making, you know, there's, there's like one or two, there's actually several, there's actually a magic focal lengths. And what I mean by magic focal lengths, magic focal lengths are 24 millimeter, 35 millimeter, not 50 like everybody thinks. There's a bazillion 50 millimeters out there, and I think I own a 50 bazillion 50 millimeters. Uh, between 55 and 58 millimeters. Uh, the next one is 85. The next one is 100 to 105. The next one above that is a 180 to 200. Next one above that is a 300 millimeter range. There are these magic focal lengths that uh, camera manufacturers like Fuji, Nikon, and Canon, and they're not going to do it, could uh, make some of these lenses which are technically imperfect but artistically epic. You think about that for a second. A lens that is artistically epic yet technically imperfect. And that's the case with, you know, all these, some of these really old damn lenses. No, some of them are still made, like the Voigtlander 58 millimeter. That's based upon a top core design. It's a really small number of output from Voigtlander. You know, they just they, Voigtlander only makes a handful of lenses. Um, there's lenses like that. There's Meyer Optic Gurlitz producing some really, really, really overpriced lenses, and I own a couple of them. Um, just think about that. Something that's artistically incredible. Yet technically, if you were to give a lens like that, and here's the issue: the people that are all these. These people are like, well, I got the best camera in the world. I want the best plastic. Photography is still an art form. If you want a technically perfect lens, fine. Let Fujifilm, Nikon, and Canon cater to you and make those lenses. But let them also make a couple of these really... Now, if Fujifilm, this would be amazing. If Fujifilm actually... I would get on my knees and kiss Fujifilm's ass. Would get on my knees and kiss Fujifilm's ass. If they came out with a reproduction, autofocus... Reproduction of the Biotar, the 58 millimeter. Now you're thinking, well, I could buy a Russian copy. Tell you what, folks, uh, since I actually have some real Biotars, I made a video about it not too long ago. Those uh, stupid ass uh, Russian made uh, junk pot lenses in Russia. I lived in Russia. Bless the Russians to death, but the Russians don't know how to make lenses. They don't. Those Russian copies suck. I mean, they suck bad. They really, really suck. They're not the same as the Biotar. If Fujifilm were to make an autofocus, it could be slow autofocus. It could just be manual focus only. A biotar. Copy. That would be epic. Fujifilm can make a statement and say, listen, you know, we got these high technical, high resolution lenses. What we're going to do, however, is make this low element lens designed specifically for artists that know what the hell they want because this lens is magical. It has magical bokeh. People have been praising this lens for decades. Everybody wants this freaking lens. We at Fujifilm. I'm not putting Fujifilm on the spot. <laughs> My screensaver. <laughs> My fireplace is frozen up. <laughs> that must be the internet, right? Um, we're going to make this uh, technically imperfect lens, which is artistically perfect. That's what these measure baiters and button sniffers don't get that inhabit these stupid photography forums. A lens that is artistically incredible. Yet is if you examine it from a robotic beep beep boop boop beep 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 beep, so we'll make a meme out of this beep 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 boop boop beep. I only know how to measure chromatic chromatic aberration, vignetting, resolution, lines per millimeter. How sharp is it? How sharp is it? How sharp is it? How sharp is it?
these people, they destroy photography. They, they well, they don't destroy it. They, they kind of ruin it. Because if Fujifilm came out with a lens like that, the first thing would happen is that the insane collective, collective stupidity of all these people in the photography. Oh my God, Fujifilm came out with this lens. It's not very sharp. It's got really weird bokeh. It's got vignetting. Oh my God, what's up with you, Fujifilm? You see, Fujifilm doesn't want to. Nor Nikon. I'm not singling out Fujifilm here. Fujifilm, they wouldn't want to get that flack. But the people that know what the hell a biotar is, I'm just using one lens as an example. What if Fujifilm came out with a, uh, a copy of the Voigtlander? Um, what if they came out with a copy of uh, what's some other magical lenses? Oh, God, there's so many. I mean, like, really, really magical. They would never come out with a version of the uh, Trio Plan. That's a three-element lens. I mean, that lens is really unsharp. <laughs> really unsharp. Um, the Russians came out with a copy of that, except it's uh, 75 millimeters at 1.4. It's a 75 1.4. Yeah, there we go. I got a couple of those. That lens is not too bad, but it's still, we're talking Russian quality. God, that lens is so damn heavy, too. Oh, my God, that lens is so heavy. You see Fujifilm? Oh, my fireplace is frozen up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fujifilm or Nikon could come out with that lens because they know all these measure baiting, button sniffing, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, these robotic people that have no idea what the hell a soul is. It's like this lens has soul. Most people like that have never held a lens that has soul. And even if they did, they'd be like, oh, this lens is technically imperfect. As I adjust my pocket protector, my lens is technically imperfect. Mm, I don't like it. <laughs> That's the first thing those people would say. And this is the reason why Nikon and Fujifilm and Canon, people are like, you know, these lenses are really, really highly in demand. The people that have, like, oh my God, this is a real artistic lens with soul. Now, I, when I say the word sell, I don't mean directly sell. But like the Voigtlander 58mm, F14 Nocturne. Do you have any idea how many thousands of those lenses I've sold? Somewhere in Japan, they're going, Hey! We keep getting on. <laughs> they wonder where all the orders. They know, actually, who it's coming from. I mean, it's the sales for that lens skyrocketed. Here's a fact. This is also a real fact, not hearsay. Voigtlander makes a lens and a certain focal length and aperture for a year or two. And whoosh, they move on to something else. They, they do that. And eventually it might roll around again five years later, ten years later. They make just a few lenses. And then they switch it up and they make another lens or replace it. It's like, this lens was selling really good. Why do they stop making it? Because they only make a few lenses. They only move on something. They have not moved on from the Voigtlander 58mm because of me. In Japan, they're, sell they're, selling, a, they're selling a piss out of that lens because of me. And that lens is not a super technical lens. That's insanely sharp, you know? Doesn't that tell you something? People out there want lenses with soul. Most people have never had, a, I've had hundreds of people told me, I've never had a lens with soul. They don't use the word soul, but they're basically saying, I've never had a lens with soul. This lens is amazing. I love it. Thank you so much for recommending it. It's not a technically perfect lens, but it's a lens that has soul. It's kind of like Sandy Crawford's wart. It's like, you wouldn't think a beautiful, beautiful woman would have a big wart on her face. But she's, you know, supermodel of great fame. She's not technically perfect. I think maybe even her nose is slightly crooked. Um, but she's, you know, she's an artistic legend. It's kind of like a lens, you know. All these people out there be like, oh, that chick's got a wart on her face, and she's got a slightly crooked nose. It's like she's a supermodel, you know? What the hell are you talking Well, I don't know. She's not technically perfect. Like, shut the hell up. Just shut up. <laughs> this, there's a world of photography where we have the artistes. I know what the hell they want. Like, I want a lens with soul. And most of them don't know what the hell a lens with soul is. They got no idea because everything that Nikon, Fuji, Canon make are these technically perfect beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, perfect lenses for the measure baiters. And, you know, that's all fine. But they should, they should say, you know, we're going to make a technically imperfect lens, but which is artistically perfect, or nearly so perfect. All the people out there that really know what the hell photography is about, I mean, really know, would be going... 
That's something I would like to see happen. That would be awesome. Awesome. All my fireplaces unfrozen. Stinking ass internet. <laughs> if you like these videos, click the link below. Leave a small donation because I'm not a shill or a puppet that has affiliate links like everybody else, and I'm not sponsored by anybody. Everybody else is a puppet with the strings attached, and I have no strings attached. I have no strings on me. Beep. Isn't that from the uh, movie of Pinocchio? Yeah, I think it is. Here we go. This is in my video, my fireplace unfreezes. Okay, it froze again. Whatever. Bye.